All right, when they come out, even louder. Like, we're all playing with that light right in the corner, like that happy. All right, we'll bring them up and get rolling. First up, they were just out here entertaining you. Uh, we'll bring up Maurice LaMarche, the brain, folks. Oh, my God. 
God's sake, it's a freaking half hour show. That man. <laughs> Andrew Clark, get up here. Come on, front and center. Let's go. Magazine rack in front of, I'd say, in front of the dog. That's pretty good. That was nice. That's very good. <laughs> Sounds just like that. He does. He's good. Yeah. Okay, now watch the magazines, because I got a fever, and the only cure is more <laughs> magazines. <laughs> I made that. That's not here. So I made that up. No, no. Nice. no charge. <laughs> it's out of my hands. It, that's very clever, sir, but. What if there's a fire? I think violating fire codes and endangering the lives of children would be unwise at this juncture in your career. All right, well, what are you doing with this? Get this out of here, for God's sake. What's the matter with you? Come on. You know, the school comes equipped with fire exits at either end of the library. Show Dick some respect! We're children. And scene. Uh -huh. oh. See, I told you this was messed up, man. You gotta tell I was kidding. If you're, if you're not high, you'll think you're high by the time you leave. <laughs> what else, dude? Some respect. Yeah. All right. Show Dick something. We're gonna keep going. Same scene, but we're gonna change it up. Oh, good. As Brian dress the cat lady from The Simpsons. Yeah. I'm Brian. As a bender, we're gonna we're gonna throw back here to a little Star Trek. Uh, Rob, how about Takei? Uma. As Bender. Yeah. Maurice. <laughs> William Shatner as Vernon. And Jess, it's only a line, but Claire is gonna be the cowardly lion. Oh sweet, dude. But I don't see the line in your shirt, sure I'm awesome. All right. Whenever you're ready. Did you say cat lady? Crazy cat. Oh, yeah. hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, they're, they're freaking Don't be redundant. That's why they wear black pants, because they can pee their pants. <laughs> Not that I'm paying attention. Okay, so we're starting with, uh... We're starting where? We're starting where? Do the... We're starting right after show dick some respect. Do the show dick line. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, again. Go ahead, Morris. Take it away. Who's oh. Okay, all right. I'll start. Chat. I'll start. I wanted the show dick line, but I'll start. I wanted you to do show dick. Show dick some respect, <laughs> sir. Thank you, George. You're welcome. I've always wanted to hear you say that. Yeah. <laughs> you have no idea, my friend. Let's go. Go. Get back in your seat. <laughs> I expect a little more from a varsity lady. You're not fooling anyone. The next screw that falls out is going to be you. Oh, really? Well, you can just eat my shorts. <laughs> and don't tell me it's not the first time. <laughs> well, what was that? Eat my shorts. You just bought yourself another Saturday, Mr. <laughs> oh, that really hurts. Oh, you just bought one more. Well, I'm free the Saturday after that. Beyond that, I'm going to have to check my calendar. Good. Because it's going to be filled. We're going to keep going. You want to say the word. Just say the word. Instead of going to prison, you'll come here. Are you... through? <laughs> no, I have a little song for you. It goes like this. It goes, I'm getting married in the morning. Oh, what a truly special day. Don't let them fool you, my fans call me Sulu, but my real name is George Takei. <laughs> and as a matter of uh, fact, I am not true. No! I'm doing society a favor. So? That's another one. Right now, I've got you for the rest of your natural born life. If you don't watch your step, do you want another one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You've got another one right here. There's another pal. <laughs> cut it out, fellas, cut it out. <laughs> I told you you're a badass. Even with one line, I kick ass. No such thing as a small car, ladies and gentlemen. I can sit down. Are you through? Not even close, bud. No, I was talking to Jess. Yeah, I'm good. Are you through? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> 
Now you can close. Good. You've got one more right there. Okay, I want you to look at me right now and pay attention. Do you really think I give a shit? That's another one. Mm-hmm. You through? How many is that? That's seven, including the one when we first came in and you asked Mr. Vernon here. Oh, not my line. Pardon me. <laughs> Who's Brad? There's oh, my school. line! <laughs> That's seven cats, including the one when we first came in. And you asked Mr. Vernon, well, there's a merry man of all the news. Merry <laughs> man of all! And he his closet! I'm going to go! See, we're doing impressions. She actually is that character. <laughs> That's the thing. Genius. I need my Reese's Pieces. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's eight. And you, Stan. Excuse me, I said. Uh, it's seven guineas. Seven. Seven. Shut up, you. You're mine. Two months, I've got you. I've got you. What can I say? I'm thrilled. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that's exactly what you want these people to believe. You know something better? You ought to spend a little more time trying to do something for yourself and a little less trying to impress me. You might be better off. All right, that's it. I'm going to be right outside these doors. The next time I have to come in here, I am going to be cracking skulls. Oh, really? <laughs> well, guess what? Forget about it, you uh, booger eating spaz. <laughs> and sing. I see. Oh. <laughs> Interesting trivia that's true. Okay, I live in the Hollywood Hills in California, and my neighbor is William Shatner. That's true. And he thinks I'm Gene Simmons from Kiss. That's true. <laughs> yeah, no, for, no, for 15 years, dude. He calls me Gene, he hangs out from my house, he goes, Gene, let's talk about women. I mean, it's insane. <laughs> okay, because we, this is, see, this is what's cool about having a relatively small group. Jesse, tell him what, when, when Bill Shatner asked Jess, because he thinks he's Gene Simmons, yeah. he asked Jess, what's it like with all those. Chicks. Well, what, he, what he said exactly, I was, I was getting my mail and I heard a car. My neighbor told me that Shatner asked him if I was in Kiss and he said yes. <laughs> awesome. See, I've never lied to him, you guys. I'm really honest, so he never asked me, are you Gene Simmons? Because I'd say no. And he goes, Gene, I go, how you doing, dude? That's it. That's yeah. it. So, so but I maintained it, which is awesome. But he's outside my house and I hear this car pull up and the window goes down and I hear this voice goes, Gene. And I don't turn around because that's not my name, but if he said it again, he goes, Gene, I turn around and it's Shatter, and he's this Land Rover. And I go, oh yeah, and Rich told him I've been kissed. And I go, yeah, dude, what's up? And he goes, uh, he goes, he goes, do you have a second I'd like to say hello? And I go, yeah. So I walk over to his car, and he's in his car, and he shakes my hand, he goes, I'm Bill. And I go, yeah, I know you. And he goes, he goes, he goes, oh, you enjoy your house? Now my house is really weird, it looks like a spaceship, for real, it's really weird. Looks like the Enterprise. Yeah, it looks like the Enterprise. And I go, I go, yeah dude, I go, I, I, I really like it, it's weird. And he goes, this is the only time he turned into Captain Kirk too, because he doesn't usually talk like Captain Kirk, but he goes, it's an unusual home, like that. And I went, yeah. I said, yeah dude, it's an unusual home, that's why I like it. He goes, listen, Gene, he goes, there's something I'm dying to ask you. This is for real, guy, word for word, I swear. And he goes, and I go, what is it? And he goes, when you go out, on the concert tour, there must be broads like crazy. Okay, now I like that because nobody said broads like crazy except Frank Sinatra. <laughs> and that was like in 1962. So the fact that he says that I thought was pretty good. And I go, yeah, there's a lot of girls, there's a lot of girls, right? And he kind of looks at me and he just stared at me for like eight seconds. And after eight seconds, he said in the creepiest voice I've ever heard, he goes, God, that's hot. <laughs> just like, Costume and with the but it's you know, it's like, this is life in my neighborhood. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, thanks for telling that story. Time, dude. That's why I got that Because usually when we do these things, dude, there's like thousands of people, but this is like chill, so we can talk about crazy shit. <laughs> All right, moving on. The next scene Reservoir Dogs. So, last chance if you have little kids. <laughs> you sick bastards, man. Last chance. Little kids leave now. All right. In the first scene, as since we had Animaniacs, we will have now Pinky in the Brain. Sweet. As Eddie, Pinky. All right. As the Brain, Mr. White. As Mr. Pink, Ironhide Jess. Okay. As Mr. Blue, Manjula. Oh, yeah. 
Tress? Okay. Oh, yeah. She likes that. <laughs> As Mr. Blonde, Jess, Pee Wee Herman. Okay. As Joe, Tress. Yeah. Babs Bunny. Yes. <laughs> and as the waitress, Jess, how about Roger Rabbit? Sweet. Woo! <laughs> yeah, dude. That's yeah. a good one. There's a lot of lines, and if you want to cross out some of the swearing, although these people want the swearing, that's, it's all. Woo! Yeah. Certain characters can't all swear. They can understand that. <laughs> this isn't a dry county, is it? It was no, Saturday, no. New Year's Eve, for God's sake. They were hammering at 10 a.m. when they got That's here. That's right, they got here. They were trying to get in. All right. All right, so there's going to be some language for us. You ready? <clears throat> no, I'm going to watch it. I want you guys to know I'm spontaneously going to edit out the really bad words, so if I say some stupid stuff because that little ninja dude right there, you'll know why. I'm yeah. Sorry. Do my best. Right? <laughs> yeah, little guy right there, I'm looking at it. Dude, listen, if you hear any stuff up here that you shouldn't, it's not from me, it's from these degenerates. Okay? Even though I look like I'd be the worst one, I'm not gonna, I'm challenging you. That's right. Right. And just know your dad was mourned, it's his fault now. <laughs> <laughs> and Jess is gonna make sure that he takes all the shit out of the bench. Yes, the shit. Yeah. That's, right. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. Okay, are we ready to rock and roll? Ready when you are. Okay. Excuse me, have you guys been listening to Kay Billy's Super Sounds of the 70s weekend? Yes, Optimus and I have been listening all day. It's freaking great, isn't it? Can you believe the songs they've been playing? No, I can't. You know what I heard the other day? Baby, 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 my little Justin Bieber. I haven't heard that freaking song in three years and I thank God for it every day. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, my lad. When I was coming down here, I was playing it. And the night the lights went out in Georgia came on. Now, I ain't heard that song since I was big. Since it was big, but when it was big, I heard it a million trillion bloody times. I'm listening to it this morning, and this was the first time I ever realized that the lady singing the song was the one who killed Andy. <laughs> what? You didn't know Vicky Lawrence killed that guy? <laughs> I thought the cheating wife shot Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they say it right in the song. La, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, Pee Wee, I heard it, but I must have zoned out whenever that part came on before. I thought when she said that little sister stuff, she was talking about her sister-in-law, the cheating wife, you see. Who's Joe? Joe? I know, oh. no, she did it. She killed the cheating wife, too. You know that part in Gypsies, Traps, and Thieves when she says, Papa would have shot his if he knew what he had done? I could never figure out what the hell he did. They had sex with her. Hey, Tippers, can I get anybody some more coffee? Yeah. Uh, I told you. We're gonna be hitting it. I'll take care of the chip. Okay, here you go. Please pay at the register if you wouldn't mind. Sure thing. You guys have a wonderful day. I'm going home to have sex with Jessica. I said sex. <laughs> Sorry, it's mine. <laughs> hey. Blondie, you want to shoot this piece of poop? <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, cough up green for the little lady. Come on, throw in a buck, you cheap ass. Oh, did I say that? See, I didn't say it. Uh, uh, you knew I, I was going to say, didn't you? I don't tip. I don't tip? I don't tip. Oh. What do you mean you don't tip? I don't believe in it. What, you don't believe in tipping? I love this kid. He's a madman, this guy. <laughs> Who's Mr. Blonde? Uh, Mr. Blonde is Pee Wee. Oh, Pee Wee, dude, I've done this. Me, I'm drunk, okay. Hang on. <laughs> do you have any idea what these ladies make? They make doodly squat. La la la, that's not what it says here. <laughs> don't give me. If she doesn't make enough money, she can quit. I don't even know a Jew who'd have the balls to say that. So let's get this straight. You never, ever tip? I don't tip because society says that I've got to. I tip when somebody deserves a tip. When somebody really puts forth an effort, they deserve a little something extra. But this tipping automatically, that crap is for the birds. As far as I'm concerned, they're just doing their job. No shit. <laughs> I oh, that is the same line, no shit. Woo! But thanks for putting it in. Well, I thought our girl was nice. 
Our girl was okay. She didn't do anything special. What is something special? Take you in the kitchen and suck your milkshake? <laughs> <laughs> and see. Continuing on with that scene, we'll change characters. As Eddie, dress Agnes Skinner. Eddie, as Joe, Rob, scratch and sniff. Doctor, oh, yeah. scratch and sniff. Yeah, I'm the as Mr. Brown, dress the Wicked Witch. As Mr. Blonde. All right, Futurama fans, don't say anything. It's going to be an either or. Do you want to have Maurice do Kif or Calculon? If you want Kif, let's hear it. Woo! If you want Calculon, let's hear it. Woo! It was like, that side was Kif and that side. That was really strange, but Kif wins, all right. As Kif, Mr. Blonde. Jess, as Mr. White, Eric Cartman. Oh, God. And Rob, as Mr. Orange, Mark Chang. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> really on parents, dude. <laughs> All right, whenever you guys are ready. I'd go over 12% for that. Blows <laughs> 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 my mind every time, man. Yes, that's extra fun. Look, you guys, I had a coffee. Now, we've been here a long freaking time since we filled my cup three times. And I had a coffee, I want to bet six times, you guys. <laughs> oh. What if she's too busy? The word too busy should not be in a way to his vocabulary. I'm being totally serious right now. Ew. Excuse me, Mr. White, but the last thing you need is another cup of coffee. <laughs> I hate you guys so much. <laughs> These ladies aren't starving enough. They make minimum wage like Kenny and his whole family. When I worked for minimum wage, I wasn't lucky enough to have a job that decided to be tip worthy. Okay, yeah, now we're getting where I'm going. It's just not that he's a cheap bastard. It's... It is that too. Yes, it is that too, but it's also that he couldn't get a waiter job. <laughs> You talk like a pissed off dishwasher. Fuck those hoes <laughs> and their carving <laughs> So you don't care that they're counting on your tip to live? Sorry. Uh, have you know what this is? It's the world's smallest violin pants yes, for the waitresses. I'm standing <laughs> their behinds. This is a hard job. <laughs> so so it's working at McDonald's, but you don't feel the need to tip them. They're serving you food, you should tip them too. But no, society says tip these guys over here, but not these guys over there. That is most here, respect my authority. <laughs> well, wait a minute, man. Hold the phone. They work harder than the kids at McDonald's. Oh, yeah, I don't see that kid in Fred and your fries. Like that was Ronald McDonald. <laughs> I'll make you more tax on the tips they make. When you stiff them up, they, you cost them money. Really? Waitressing is the number one occupation for female non-college graduates in this country. It's the one job basically any woman can get and make a living on. The reason is because of tips. Yes, do all that. Listen, I'm very sorry that the government taxes their tips. That is screwed up, but that is my fault. It would appear that waitresses are just one of the many groups the government has illegal sex with. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the line here suggests that it is, in fact, a felony, a felonious <laughs> type of stuff. You show me a paper that says the, the government shouldn't do that, I will sign it. Put it to a vote I thought you mean. But what I want to do is pay back. And this non college bullshit you're telling me, I got two words for that. Learn the freaking time. Because if you expect me to help out with the rent, you're in for a huge freaking surprise. Screw you guys, I'm going home. <laughs> okay, um, well, you convinced me. Give me my dollar back, dickhead. <laughs> okay, Agnes, let's get to a wedding. Wait a minute. 
who didn't throw in? Mr. White. Mr. White. Why? He don't tip. He don't tip. You don't tip? Why? <laughs> he don't believe in it. <laughs> he don't believe in it? Wait a minute, hold on, hold the phone here. You don't believe in it? No. Shut the front door! <laughs> Call up the buck, you cheap bastard. I paid for your goddamn breakfast. I hate you so much, Kyle. I hate you so much. Because you paid for the breakfast, I'm gonna tip. Normally I wouldn't, I would just kick you in the nuts and get out of here. Yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. Just throw in your dollar and let's move. You see what I'm dealing here with this thing, with these infants? I'm freaking dealing with infants. It's more difficult than having Yakko back with that when they're not on the Tylenol. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And see. Some crazy stuff, right, Dave? By the way, we used to have to watch Rob do that when we did our maniacs, and he would have scratch and sniff in the echo scenes, and he'd just sit there talking to himself, and then he got on lithium and he stopped. Right. <laughs> I have to make sure that I don't take my pills so I can go to work. <laughs> What's really scary is when you start to overlap yourself. That can be a problem. All right. Cool. Okay. That was awesome hearing him talk to himself. How funny was that? I didn't even realize it was like that. That's my fault. How are you? I'm fine. All right. We're going to move on to Harry Potter. Okay. You guys have heard of that, right? <laughs> yeah, just a little. And, it, and it, I won't even tell you the scene. I'll let you figure it out because you're all nuts and you love it. For this scene, as the narrator from The Simpsons dress, Shauna. Sean. Cool. McGonagall, Rob, is going to be Woody Allen. Okay. Excellent. As Draco, Maurice, hedonism bot from Future <laughs> As uh, Ron, all right, let's see here. Do we want, yeah, you know what? Do we want Yosemite Sam or Morbo? Yosemite Sam! Holy cow, that was your hand. I just said Yosemite Morbo. Yosemite Sam as Ron. That's funny, it's not a lot of lines, but that'll it'll work, that'll work. As the sorting hat, Jess. Yeah. Do you want to do Bill Cosby or do you want to sing all your lines as Michael McDonald? Ooh, dude. What do you want, Bill Cosby? Ready? If you want Bill Cosby, let's hear it. Woo! If you want him to sing all his lines as Michael McDonald, let's hear it. Maybe I'll mix him up. That's what I'll do. I'll go back and forth. Jazz is gonna. Yeah, dude. This is like coloring with really stupid crayons. All right, Maurice. <laughs> As Hermione, you're gonna be Popeye. Popeye as Hermione. Hermione is Popeye. Yeah. And Rob did this a little bit in the intro, but Dumbledore has a spot here. Oh. And we're gonna bring back your drunk guy. Okay. He's gonna be a drunk Dumbledore. So get ready. You've never seen that before. I believe, I'm mad if you know oh, and as Harry Potter, Tress, Miss Springfield. All right. Now we're ready. Okie dokie, all right. Okay, so we're starting off right now. It goes like this. It says, the, the sorting ceremony will begin momentarily. So, you know, goodbye. Okay, so like Draco Malfoy, a slick back, evil looking boy, Spectre. Nice. It's true, then, what they're saying on the train. <laughs> Harry Potter has come to Hogwarts. <laughs> this is Crab and Goyle, and I am Malfoy. Draco Malfoy. <laughs> oh, you think my name's funny, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no need to ask yours. Red hair and a hand-me-down robe? You must be a Weasley. Well, soon. We'll find that well, we'll soon find that some wizarding families are better than others, Potter. <laughs> you don't want to go making friends with the wrong sort. I can help you there. Yeah, well, I think I can tell you the wrong sort for myself. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, actually, we're ready for you now. Okay. She leads everyone through two really big doors and into the great hall, where they do these like long, four long tables with many, many kids, yeah, as well as floating candles. That's what that was in the pool. 
Anyway, the roof appears to be the sky. <laughs> it's not real, the ceiling. It's just bewitched to look like the night sky. I went into one of the Hogwarts, a history. All right, all right, good. Would you all wait along here, please? Now, before we begin, uh, Professor Dumbledore would you know, like to say a few words if you've got time. If you don't, it's too bad. <laughs> all right, hi, I'm Dumb. I'm Dumbledore. <laughs> I have a few star term notices I wish to announce. I wish to announce to you. Now then, the first years, please note that the dark forest is strictly forbidden, forbidden to all students. Also, our caretaker, caretaker, Mr. Flu, Mr. F that guy. <laughs> has asked me to remind you that the third floor or corridor <laughs> on the right hand side is out of, a, out of bounds to everyone who does not wish to die a most painful death. A most painful death. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, okay, when I call your name, you will you know, come forth. I shall place the sorting hat on your head, and you will be sorted into your houses. Hermione Granger? Oh, no. Okay, relax. Man, <laughs> <laughs> that one, I'm telling you. Mm, right then. Let me think to myself about where the books you see. Before I decide on which house you should go in, I think you should drink something. Listen, dude, that's not my fault. I hey, he did that. I'm just okay. I, I, okay. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna put you in the house called Gryffindor. Now, now wait a minute. I, I can't even spell Gryffindor. <laughs> In joke. Not the sort of thing you want to mess with. The whole chair, okay. Draco Malfoy. Ah! Oh! Oh, uh, sorry. It's okay. Um, uh, it's okay. Um, With the flashback. Draco or Draco or whatever. <laughs> Saunders up proudly, okay? The tattered hat nearly freaks. Before touching down on Draco Draco or whatever is happening. <laughs> Check this out. You're gonna join the house of Slytherin. <laughs>
I'm gonna put you in the house of Slytherin. Wait a minute. There's no doubt about that. No. Well, if you're sure, it better be the house of Gryffindor. And see. say something on behalf of all of us, and I always say this, and it's always true. We we come out here and we do this stuff, right? We get to meet you guys, because basically we work in studios by ourselves in a quiet room with like some guy behind the board and just recording all this crazy stuff we say. We don't generally get a chance to meet the people who watch the stuff we do, and I want you guys to know how much we appreciate all of you coming out and meeting us and being so cool. We love having you come down to the table and say hi, and we appreciate each and every one of you, so thank you very, very much, okay? You don't even have to buy anything. If you want to say hi, we'd love to meet you. It's all good. Um, and there was one other thing I wanted to say, but I forgot it, so screw it. <laughs> all right, last scene. All right, back to the future. Cool. Okay. And you know what? We have a line, and I noticed someone in the audience that we should bring up here to read it. Who do? Oh. You've all heard of Stranger Things. Have you guys, you guys seen watching Stranger Things? <laughs> guys, Chester Rushing is here. Get up, Chester. Get up, Chester. Chester, get over here. Get up, man, Chester. Chester. Nice to meet you, buddy. He's too damn good looking. Come on, folks. Big round of applause. Nice to meet you. Thanks, bud. Now, I, I have the, the privilege of knowing he does a Christopher Walken imitation, so. Yay, it's odd. It's not as good. The bit. No. No, you're great. You should be just both. Look, Look this is like, it's mini me. <laughs> It's weird, but I'm bigger with counts. Yeah, he's got my watch up his ass. Now, <laughs> that's where it's big. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, we got it started. Hey, if you're not careful, you're going to inspire the walking dead. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, guys, I got a song. These boats are made for walking. Yeah. <laughs> Too easy. Listen, don't do that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get another casting here. All right, yeah. let's see. Uh, so you got a line you can tell me. You can Don't tell me. Just either do walking to yourself or whatever you want. Do whatever you want, dude. You're going to be the doctor. The doctor. And you're the doctor for a reason because it's a very funny piece, and that's why I want you to do it. The doctor? doctor. The doctor. So I'll flip through, find the doctor. They're two-sided. Um, as the narrator, Maurice, we have to bring in Peter Falk. Oh, oh, for those of you that don't know who Peter Falk is, he narrated The Princess Bride. As you wish. All right, for Stella, Tress, yeah. mom from Futurama. Woo! And you're also going to do Sam as Dolph from The Simpsons. All right. Excellent. Okay, as Milton, Maurice, we're going to have you go to Morbo. Morbo. Yes. As Marty Rob, yeah. Carl Weezer. Okay. And as Lorraine Jess, Arnold Schwarzenegger. This, this is a personal favorite that I did because it made me laugh to myself, and you're all as messed up as me. Yeah. So you're going to love this. Listen, scene. this is really bad. Okay, so seriously, Bruce. This is why the kids had to leave is yeah. this scene. This is weird. This is the closer, this is the encore. All right, whenever you guys are ready, be prepared. By the way, also I have to say, for those of you who do know Peter Falk, one of the most beautiful things about Maurice, apart from the fact that he's just a really lovely guy and picks up the check more often than not, is that you gotta watch him because yeah. he, he really becomes Peter Falk. And if you know what Peter Falk looks like, when Mo starts doing the impression, you gotta watch him, it's pretty good. No, no pressure, pressure, no pressure. No pressure at all. That'd be great. All, all right. right. You start you, underneath you, the line. Did you say, so, sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay. Sidebar. Did you say um, Stella and Zach? Yeah, I said Stella is mom. 
Yeah. Use your Emma. And Sam is Dolph. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. so okay, fire it up, dude. Interior darkened bedroom. <laughs> Party is lying in bed. Lit by ambient light from a doorway. Female hands place a right? compress on the bruise on his forehead. Party groans and stirs. <laughs> that, see what I mean? Isn't that crazy? That's awesome. <laughs> With no chemical inducement. Well, as far as we know. Okay. Mom? Uh, is that you? Who's <laughs> <laughs> that? Shh. Stop it, little fellow. Everything is going to be fine. <laughs> it sounds like it's mud. Yeah, of course it does. What the hell kind of mud is this kid? <laughs> Jesus. He opens his eyes. All he can see is his silhouette. <laughs> Yeah, I read a horrible nightmare. I dreamt I went way back in time. <laughs> he starts to sit up. No, no. No time for push-ups or sit-ups now. Take it easy. You've been asleep for almost nine hours. Many things might have happened to you in that time. <laughs> this is getting pretty freaking creepy. Out <laughs> oh, yeah, but it was terrible. It was a terrible place to be. The music was awful. They didn't even have rock. Their cars were ugly. My neighborhood hadn't been built yet, and everything was so weird looking. Well, you're safe and sound now, back where you belong in Google 1955. That's still creepy. 1955? She turns on the bedroom lamp. It's the same girl George was spying on, and Marty recognizes her just as we do. Oh my God! You're my, you're my, 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 my name's Lorraine. Lorraine Baines. Marty stares at her for a long moment. You're so thin. Stop it! I work out 19 times a day. What are you talking about? Listen, relax, Calvin. You got quite a little bruise on your little nubby head there. All right. This is why it's getting creepy because I have to ask the following question. Um, where are my pants? <laughs> Over there, on the futon. <laughs> I've never seen this red underwear before, Calvin. Marty covers himself up. Calvin? Why are you calling me Calvin? Because it's your name, little cutie pie. Calvin Clyde is written on your underwear. Oh, but boy, I guess people call you Cal. No, well, at, why are you looking at my underwear? <laughs> you know, in this light, you look a lot like Roman Polanski. <laughs> 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 um, no, people don't call me Cal, they actually call me Marty. Well, I'm very pleased to meet you, Marty. He used to call me the governor, but I got fired. <laughs> she comes over and sits on, sits. I gotta work on that. <laughs> she comes over and sits on the bed. Oh, wait a minute. You didn't say she comes over and shits on the bed. That's right. I'm trying to make that. That's a whole I'm different thing. It's a little ninja. All right. Thank you. She comes over and sits on the bed right next to me. She is uh, very interested in me. I'm very interested in you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, do you mind if I sit on you? I mean, if I sit here. <laughs> Because it says so in the script. <laughs> no. Marty moves as far away as he can without falling off the bed. He holds the blanket light around his waist. Tight. There's no such thing as a blanket light. Well, there is, but we're not going to go into that. <laughs> he holds the blanket tight around his waist. You try reading like this. <laughs> he holds the blanket tight around his waist. She looks at him. Fascinating. Fantastic. I'm looking at you, fascinated. <laughs> That's quite the bruise there on your tiny little melon ball head. She strokes gently his tiny little melon ball head. <laughs> <laughs> and then she runs his <laughs> She runs her hand through his head. Marty moves even further and falls off the bed. Turin, you idiot! Are you up there? 
hear footsteps coming up the stairs. It's my mother, Queen, put your pants back on! <laughs> Interior dining room night. Marty takes a seat at the dinner table next to Lorraine as Mrs. Stella Baines, 40, and pregnant, makes the introductions to the kids. That's Milton, that's Sally, and that's Toby. And next to you there at the pig pen is little Joey. Marty turns and looks at the basement at 11-month-old Joey rattling the bars in his playpen. So, you're my Uncle Joey. <laughs> Get used to those bars, kid. <laughs> oh, yes. Little Joey loves being in his pen. He actually cries when we take him out, so we leave him there all the time. <laughs> it seems to make him happy. So we do what we can. Have some meatloaf, Marty. He hands him a plate of meatloaf. It looks like the same meatloaf he had for dinner in 1985. In fact, the whole dinner is the same. <laughs> Sam, you idiot! <laughs> Quit fiddling with that thing and come in here and eat! <laughs> Don't eat so fast! Bastard! <laughs> you're, you're not eating enough. Have some of these mashed potatoes, you bastard! <laughs> No potatoes to me, Mama. Not doing carbs at the moment. <laughs> now, Ralph Sandbanes, 45, rolls in a brand new television on a plywood dolly of his own construction. Oh, look at that. It totally rolls. <laughs> now we can watch Jackie Gleason while we eat, bro. Oh, boy! <laughs> <laughs> On TV, a surgeon steps out of an operating room, lights up a cigarette, and turns to do a testimony. After facing tension, <laughs> I'm doing three lung operations in a row. Yeah. I like to relax, lighting up is so random. <laughs> oh, I know it's fine tobacco, and it was smooth and nerves. And I'll improve my <laughs> circulation. <laughs> It's our first television set. Daddy picked it up today. Tell me, Calvin, do you have a red television to go with your little underpants? <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, you're such a creepy dude. <laughs> yeah, I got two of them. Wow! You must be rich! <laughs> Milton, you idiot! He's teasing you. Nobody, nobody has two television sets. <laughs> what the hell? Meanwhile, the honeymooners has resumed. The classic man from space episode. Oh, hey, hey, I see this one. This is a good one. This is where Ralph dresses up as the man from space. <laughs> what do you mean you have seen it? It is brand new. No, you're an odd dude, too, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw it on a rerun. Rerun? Televisions do not work that way! Good night! <laughs> <laughs> what is a rerun? Oh, you'll find out! Quiet! I want to hear this! Hello, Marky! I'd like to give your mother a call and let her know you're all right. Um, well, no, because you can't. Why the hell not? Everybody's so freaking angry. <laughs> well, she's out of town with my dad. Um, hi. Wait, wait a minute. Could you tell me where Riverside Drive is? Oh, Riverside? Well, sure, it's on the east end of town. A block past Maple. A block past Maple? But that's Kennedy Drive. Oh, uh, say again? Well, John F. Kennedy Drive. Oh, I don't know who John F. Kennedy is. Never mind, we are in Dallas after all. So. <laughs> well, it was teed up for me! <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Never mind. Mother, tell me, we bought these pants out of town. Don't you think you should spend the night here? I hate for anything to happen to him with that little itty itsy bitsy nubby little melon ball head of his. Oh, man. She gives him a flirtatious spine. Yeah, I do. <laughs> You'll have to take his word for it. As you wish. Marty, Moraine is crude. You've got to spend the night. You're our responsibility. Spend the night? Yeah. Oh, uh, gee, I would make the guy who looks at my underpants. I, I don't know. He could sleep in my room. Oh, okay. <laughs> Under the table, Lorraine puts a hand on Marty's leg. Don't visualize it. <laughs> Marty immediately jumps to his feet. Um, okay, 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 okay. Okay, actually, I really gotta be going. So, thank you for everything. I'll see you later. Lorraine sighs romantically. Nah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>